Good afternoon. I trust that you would have got my corporate threat register. However, I just wanted to have a chat with you to further um, show you my reasoning for my threat. So the threat that I thought that really affects a business is building and land owners do not approve of the spaces um, that we would want to implement our sky ports. So the source of this threat obviously are, um, are the owners of the possible land and buildings where we're, we want to build our sky ports. So these, <coughs> excuse me, these owners could refuse to cooperate with us during the process of trying to implement the correct agreements surrounding the implementation of the correct and safe infrastructure um, by our, and this risk um, will prevent us really from launching at our desired year of 2023. Um, and a trigger for this event could be lack of communication and information provided to the stakeholders, which would be the owners of the building. Um, so for this, it's just really important to keep the conversation and information flowing between ourselves and the part, um, the third party, so the owners, but I'll touch on that a little bit later. So the consequences of this threat um, are determined to be major as without the correct agreements in place to construct the necessary landing infrastructure, um, it jeopardizes the whole Uber Air launch date, um, which we have gone so publicly with. So it would look really bad for the company if we were to have to continue to keep pushing that date further back. So it um, obviously, we have proposed that we use cities, airports, existing helipads and um, car park buildings as our proposed landing spaces. However, before we can um, just decide that that's how we're going to land our drones, we need to form the agreements, as mentioned, um, with the owners and the stakeholders of the buildings, as there are other stakeholders um other than just the owners, there could be the people who use the buildings for work. If um, we have to have our customers using the lifts, the toilets, amenities, it could disrupt, excuse me, disrupt the people who are paying a lease um, to have their place of work within the building, or it could be their place of residence. So we have to sort of con consider a few um, different stakeholders that could affect us getting these agreements. Um, therefore, the, this consequence level is major as, it, um, as if we struggle to get the optimal number of agreements necessary, it will continue to affect um, when we'll be able to launch. So the likelihood um, is classified as likely. Um, as a CASA spokesperson has stated that infrastructure for these mini airports that we need doesn't exist yet, which is true. Um, and we cannot be sure that every building um, that we propose to build on top of will completely apply. They, um, sorry, comply. They'll have their um, things that they want to be agreed upon will have ours. It will be a large process and there is a chance that, you know, we're not gonna just be able to choose a spot and everything's gonna happen really easy and um, they'll agree we might have to try a few different areas, a few different um, land spaces. It could be a quite a lengthy process. So if we continue to have difficulty obtaining the correct agreements, it would conflict with our um, operational time horizon as without, as I said, as without the correct agreements, we are will be unable to start construction of the sky ports, which will result again in not being able to launch in 2023. So um, this is a high risk as it directly affects whether or not we'll be able to launch any drones in 2023, as without anywhere to land, the whole system will fail to work. Due to this being a high risk review, it will be ideal that um, there is quarterly reviews conducted by senior management leading up to the launch to ensure that the organization is on track. Um, this way, by communicating this to the board, they will, and then they'll be able to communicate this to the board and stakeholders so everyone will know exactly what's occurring, 
within the risk and it'll be um, this way it'll be able we'll be able to um, ensure that it is correctly managed um, to keep us on track for our launch date so however we do need to take into consideration that this is new technology that we're dealing with and especially in regards to something as such as a mini airport um, therefore there is not an ample amount of research prior to um, that has been done prior to this um, which means there are some discrepancies and gaps within my risk report as um, there just isn't that research there however as we're going we're learning more and um, it's just important to that we sort of um, identify that there could be some discrepancies in the research. Now um, that we have a further understanding of how the risk will affect the organisation, it is ideal for the, um, that we put some treatment strategies in place to attempt to overcome this risk. So the first strategy um, that I propose would be to form a small team of senior in and innovative Ex executives um, that are dedicated to handling all dealings between Uber Air and landowners for this construction of Skyports. And then, um, sorry, sorry, with the small team, um, yeah, they would be dedicated to finding, sourcing the land and just ensuring that that all runs smoothly and staying on top of that so that we are able to stay on top of this risk. And then the second strategy um, would be to have additional um, potential backups um, of land or buildings so that if the first or our primary first choices don't succeed, we do have a, some backups there if we need them and it's not back to square one, we still have some options. Um, so we're not wasting any time. So as um, mentioned just previously, the personnel responsible for handling um, these risk preparedness actions needs to be someone of a higher level management. Um, and then obviously our legal teams will need to be involved and present at contract meetings to mitigate the agreements with the landowners. Um, however, there are some escalations that, escalation triggers that could happen that will mean that we have to completely just override the um, strategies that I've just mentioned because this is just, it's a little bit, it's really hard to prepare for these. So we sort of all just have to, if it happens, which hopefully it doesn't, we'll have to deal with it then. But um, the first one will be one to two years out from the launch date and we still do not have the approved site to build our sky ports due to regulations um, and it affecting stakeholders too much. So um, our sky ports are going to be extremely futuristic and new technology, therefore we need time to be able to build them and construct them properly for the launch date. And then the second trigger, escalation trigger, um, would be the correct technology and infrastructure is not developed on time to build the sky ports. So as I just mentioned, our sky ports are very forward, like future forward. So it is making sure that we have all the correct um, infrastructure plans and technology plans surrounding building these sky ports in place and that they will comply with the um, regulations of where we are, have chosen to build the land so it all runs smoothly and we can um, build the sky ports and launch when we want to launch. So overall, the risk of not having the sufficient infrastructure in place by 2023 gravely affects the likelihood of Uber Air, of, sorry, of ourselves not being able to launch on this date. Um, because this risk affects the ability to launch, it rates high on the risk matrix and should be handled by a high level executive. When taking into consideration all factors of this risk, some um, preparedness actions were developed in order to effectively manage the risk and excuse me and um, that this is why it's recommended that a small task force like group be formed within the organization dedicated to sourcing and finalizing land agreements for them for the sky ports secondly if these agreements um, should fall through uber air will still have backup land, which may not be um, the optimal location for our Skyports. However, it will still be able to launch on our desired date. 
um, which overall is the main objective that we are striving towards. So the results of these strategies should be recorded, communicated and validated by employees of the appropriate levels. And these strategies will enhance Uber's um, readiness to launch our response and recovery for further risk um, surrounding the development of our infrastructure. Overall, um, I think we should respond to this risk assessment with an open mind and use it as a starting point of ensuring safe and smooth implementation of the Uber drones in Melbourne. Thank you.